Hey there, Stanley, and welcome back. As we continue our series with Richard Grant, and we're gonna talk about three things today. Specifically, number one, how do you avoid the no contact relapse? How do you avoid being hoovered, sucked back in after the relationship with a narcissist ends and you've got no contact? You know my thoughts on it. I'll share a little bit with you in today's video. And today you're gonna to hear Richard Grant's thoughts on that topic. Secondly, we're gonna talk about what to do when you feel stuck in a relationship. So when you feel like you just can't get out of it because you have kids or some other situation in your life is stopping you from going, you can't afford to leave, you just don't wanna leave your, your, your person, whatever it is, we're gonna talk about that. And finally, we're gonna talk about whether it's possible to actually have a successful relationship with a narcissist. It is Tough Love Thursday here at queenbeing.com. So let's get started. My name's Angie Atkinson and on this channel, I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. If that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and we'll just get going. So we're just gonna jump right into this. Like I said, I'm continuing my series with Richard Grannon today, so I'm sharing a bit more of our interview with you. Let's go ahead and jump right into the first topic. Just recently, we talked about going no contact with a narcissist and how sometimes we kind of have a relapse and it's almost like we're dealing with a drug addiction when we're dealing with our feelings for a narcissist. But when we're talking about the no contact relapse, very often we're talking about having been hoovered in. Sometimes we're hoovered in by the narcissist, they suck us back in with promises of better things to come, or sometimes we, as one of my viewers has often said, we self-hoover, we just kind of draw ourselves back in. Either way, when we break no contact on purpose or on accident, it's a problem. So we're gonna talk about what it means to be sucked back in by a narcissist and how you can avoid that. So we're gonna start really quickly though with a definition of hoovering for those who don't know. Take a look. So what is hoovering anyway? Well, the hoovering technique was named after the famous vacuum cleaner company and it's one of the many common manipulation tactics that narcissists use when they're abusing you and being toxic. It's sort of when the narcissist sucks their victim back into the relationship or some version of it. It often begins innocently enough, sort of subtly, but it always happens with one target and that is to regain control. Hoovering happens after the devalue and discard phases when the silent treatment has stopped giving the narcissist pleasure and when the narcissist is ready for more of the supply that you've been so good at feeding them all of these months or years. Or it'll start when you've left the narcissist and they fear you won't return. The idea is that the narcissist needs to reestablish contact with you in order to get the narcissistic supply that you're so good at providing. This is a dangerous tactic because once a narcissist gets back into your good graces, well, you'll often find yourself being love bombed and hearing promises of brighter days ahead, but sadly, they won't last. So you know my stance on this. I think it's really important to stay focused on what you want, not what you don't want, and to remind yourself why you shouldn't get involved. Personally, I think it's a really good idea to make a list of reasons that you wanted to leave or go no contact in the first place and to stick it somewhere you can find it when you feel weak. And of course, if you need to, go minute by minute in order to cope with the difficult times of feeling the urge to call the narcissist or stalk their social media profiles or whatever, then go minute by minute. Use pattern interrupts, use different techniques to help yourself, and I'll link to some videos up here for you with more information about that. Here is what Richard thinks about all that stuff. Take a look. Well, we've we've got to look at, you know, the reality of, of what is happening, and that includes the totality of the reality. So um, we're using these words that we have within, within our community, uh, relapsing hoovering and everything else that's one way of framing it and then there's mm -hmm. the framing that other people would give to it which is you know you got back with your abusive boyfriend you got back with your abusive girlfriend mm -hmm. sometimes it's nice to put everything in layman's terms just to remind ourselves of what we're really doing so that we're not avoiding it yeah you know and then when you use that kind of language you'd be like why would a person do that I've already identified that my girlfriend is abusive in this way, this way, this way, this way, and this way. I went through the rigmarole of splitting up with her. Why would I get back with her? What's going on for me that that would happen? What was going on for me when I originally got with her? And what was going on for me the second time around? Now, usually what people will find if we come back to this element of power dynamics is that they're in a weak position. So you were very lonely the first time you got with that person. 
and then you split up with them and then you kind of miss them and you were lonely. So to relieve yourself of that pain of loneliness, you just got back with them again and started the whole cycle again. When you put it in those terms, I think it's easier to see how um, non-melodramatic and how pedestrian the decisions we're making are and what's the key problem here. Well, the key problem, the common denominator in the two scenarios I just described is I'm lonely. Okay, so why is that happening? What kind of a lifestyle am I living where I would feel like this horrible person is is not just my best option, but my only option. Something's up and uh, that should be addressed. Okay, so we've talked about that, but what happens if you feel like you're stuck? You can't leave the narcissist because you don't have any money or you have children with a narcissist and you don't want to raise your children alone or maybe you can't get another place to live or there's a number of reasons we can't go no contact. Sometimes it's because we are the person's child or we're the person's sister or the person is our soulmate, we think, or whatever. What if you feel stuck in a relationship with a narcissist and you can't go no contact? How do you handle that? I hear this question all the time. And one of the first things that I ask people is, are you being physically abused? If you're not being physically abused, certainly that gives you a little more time. But I think it's really important to start working on an exit plan. When you're working on your exit plan, it can help you to take a little bit of your power back. If you plan ahead, you can begin to take steps to find your freedom again and, and change your life. So make sure you go check out queenbeing.com slash plan, P-L-A-N, if you're in the process of working on your exit strategy. It is very empowering to do so and it can really change your life. Hey, take a look at what Richard has to say about feeling stuck in a narcissistic relationship. Take a look. I would always say, if somebody says to me, I'm stuck, then I'll say, okay, you're stuck. What does that mean? What are you telling me? You say you're stuck. So is the person saying, I, there's nothing I can do? And I'll go, is that what you're saying to me? Are you saying there's nothing you can do? So we've got to actually look at what the person is claiming when they say something like, I'm just stuck. And you go, okay, so there's nothing that anybody could do. And there's nothing you could do to help yourself. Because of course, there's always something you mm -hmm. can do. And you've got to start where you're at. And you might be starting from scratch. You might be starting from the very bottom of the bottom or slightly mm -hmm. less than that. You might be starting from inside a hole. But whatever it is, you like you can either stay there, and this is the this is where I would get into philosophy with my clients. So well let's look at this philosophically. If you stay there, who's what will the world care? Is so it's like is the UN gonna rise up and fucking come and give you a get you out? No. Does anybody really fucking care if you stay there? So what's going on with your family and friends where they're already not helping? Why are they not helping? Are there issues there that need resolving? And if there really is no, if there really is nobody who can help you, then you've got to start from that situation and go, wow, I'm in a to totally helpless situation here. Okay, well, beyond paying a coach to talk to you about this, what else have you got going? What else is going on? Um, really what has happened uh, and it's good for coaches, it's good for you and I to realize this, is when somebody has gone into, I'm stuck, they're basically, it's a, that's not a mature adult response to the situation, but they're flashbacking into uh, like an adolescent response, like, oh, there's just nothing I can do. So you have to be like, well, you know, there should be something you can do. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, if you go, and if you don't do it, mate, the world's going to keep on spinning and the stars will still sprinkle away in the sky. So you better fucking get on with it. So my approach is that's why it's called the Spartan life coach was it's not, I'm not going to molly coddle you. Like you are in the situation you're in and God damn it, it is awful. You know, and I would say that to people and I'd say like, you should say that to yourself. Like this situation is awful. Don't, I don't want people to hyper normalize the awfulness they've been through into going, Oh, this is just the way the world works no it isn't that's a dreadful situation to be in yeah. and when you are moving forward and you eventually claw your way out of that hole and then they hoover you you'll remember how awful the hole was right and then i'll give them the eye contact that says right and they'll go yeah i'll remember so you know you, like we've got to it's very difficult because for people who are struggling with this kind of thing, yeah. you don't usually have the equipment for coping with very stressful situations. Like the emotional maturity is not quite there. So sometimes you'll be dealing with a client and you'll be dealing with them at age eight and sometimes you'll be dealing with them at age 14. Mm -hmm. So you've got to kind of like go, come on, kid, we've got to get ourselves out of this. Can you ever imagine someone having a successful relationship with a narcissist? 
absolute bullshit. I'm sorry, can I swear on your interview? Please do. <laughs> For yourself. Like, like, it just, anybody, I saw somebody just yesterday, uh, it was on one of my pages, and I didn't bother to get stuck in because I don't find that particularly useful <laughs> use of my time. Mm -hmm. Somebody was saying, yes, I think you could be happy, happy with a narcissist. Can you be happy with a narcissist? Yes, you could be. And I'm like, you know, I don't know what mental gymnastics you're doing or what kind of odd, masochistic, cowardly, spineless, life-denying philosophy you have. But it's like saying, could you be happy as a slave? Could you be happy under fascist tyranny? Yeah. You know, could you be happy living with somebody's jackboot on your face for the rest of your life? Now, if you have a particular uh, uh, and rare psychological outlook where that does make some people very, very rare, very, very small number of people uh, feel safe, to be bullied and to be dominated for the rest of their lives, then okay, I'm, who am I to tell you that you know you're that's not the way that you, that you are? But for most people, no, there's no such thing. No, right. absolutely no such thing. There is only doom, depression, chaos, and despair at the end of that tunnel. Yeah, yeah. Intermittent reinforcement keeps you hooked, right? <laughs> As we discussed recently, narcissists don't change. They could change, but they don't change. Part of the reason for that is because by very their very nature, someone with narcissistic personality disorder can't change. While I do believe it's possible for them to change, I've never seen it happen. And as we discussed in this video, neither has Richard. Let me know your thoughts. This brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, did any of these points hit home for you today? Do you feel like this love was a little too tough for you? Or are you with us on this subject? Share your thoughts and your ideas in the comment section below and let's talk about it. Before you go, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to be notified of my next upload with Richard Grannon. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon. It's my mission to teach others what I know to be true. You really can create the life you want. Take care of your body. Take care of your soul. Nurture the real you and introduce him or her to the world. Be comfortable in your own skin and in your place in this world. Take your spot. Take it now. And the universe will take its cue from you. You feel me? If so, subscribe to my channel. Let's get it done together.